I'm old. <laughs> <laughs> so what's your name? James Benjamin Wolf. And uh, how old are you? I'm 36 years old. And what do you do or what's the nickname you might have? Um, what was, oh, they call me Wolfie. Wolfie. That's my nickname. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So Wolfie, um, uh, what did you want to be when you grew up? I wanted to be a pilot when I grew up. And I was... Like an Air Force pilot or uh, a commercial pilot? Or? A commercial pilot, yep. yep. Unfortunately, I was limited because of type 1 diabetes. Can't make money flying with that. You can still get your pilot's license, and that's still a dream of mine that's attainable. So I'm looking forward to doing that one day. Awesome. Um, what was your first job, and how did you get it? Well, my dad would always say that my first job was school. But when I did good in school... When I was 16 years old, I got a job working at an Arby's in Gwinnett County. And that was a very good experience because I was going to school. After school, I go work with my friends, make a little pocket money. And that was always nice. Fantastic. Um, did you like the schedule? Were they flexible with your school? They were very flexible. Um, while you were there, what was either the best or worst experience you had? The best experience I ever had was my boss. His name was Paul Dubach, and I'll never forget it. He was this older British guy. And I just started learning guitar, and he was a guitar player too. And he always supported me so much, and he would always talk to me about it. He really met me on my level. And I don't think a lot of bosses do that, especially with high schoolers. They're just dismissive of them. I do your work, go home. This guy just believed in us. And I remember when I got my first electric guitar, and I told him, hey, Paul, I got this guitar with money I earned working at Arby's. He was so proud. And I'll never forget that feeling. Like he was almost in tears. Like he, he would just talk about it. He bought this guitar. And it was a good moment. Awesome. Yeah. Do you think that maybe the way he approached things were was different because maybe he grew up in a different country? Or did that not even play a factor, you think? I don't know. And it's weird thinking about it because in the corporate ladders of these restaurants is often very strict follow rules or you're terminated this guy knew we were kids and stuff would happen and he handled us as such he showed empathy yes which is kind of in short supply sometimes for sure um were you ever out of work for a long time if so how did you handle it? well i've been fortunate to go through several economic collapses and hang on to my job that i've been at for uh uh, 14 years as a teacher when COVID happened I actually started working more like I started this delivery service and then I started working at Jags Pizza and I was working pretty much full-time through the pandemic in the safest way possible but um what I started to realize was is sometimes when life gives you breaks you need to take them and they're there for a reason and one thing that is more important than money is your time. As and they say, the king and the pauper both have 24 hours in a day. Yeah. All right. So what type of music genre do you like? If you had to tell someone who didn't know much about music, would there be something that you would point um, to help them grow with their horizon in music? Yes. Most definitely folk songs, because a lot of them, they're melodies we sang as children. And that way, when we pick up a guitar, the chords are generally simple and we can sing along with them. And a lot of, a lot of melodies that people come up with are based on these old folk songs. And that's one reason we teach them to children at such a young age is because they're, they, they translate into so much more things. When we get into jazz improv and stuff, we all learn improv off these basic folk songs. Now, you mentioned guitar. Guitar can be intimidating for people. It takes a certain skill set to get into it to maybe fully enjoy it. Is there anything you would recommend in different instruments just to get people started? Um, I would say play the instrument that you want to play because they're all a challenge in their own way. So there's no sense. I The one thing I can't stand, even though it happens, is... People will say, all right, well, you need to learn piano, and then I'll buy you an electric guitar. Well, what if you just don't like piano, and you never get to the point of an electric guitar, 
and you've missed out on something that you could have started at a young age. Now, would you agree with John Cage and his approach that everything is music, even in the absence of intention? Yes. John Cage is interesting, but you can find music everywhere and everything, and there's no rules. You could say there's you know, 12 notes, chromatic steps, and those are the rules, and you have to follow them. But also, you could travel to India, and they use quarter tones instead of half tones. And it's all about making it work and getting your message across and enjoying what you do. Kind of like when you hear birds, they might not follow specific octaves or quarter notes or things like that. It still sounds beautiful. Correct. Even cicadas, they mm -hmm. sing. And and they they come together and they, uh, it's fascinating listening to them. Yeah. Um, so uh, f if you were to teach children music, what's the first thing to help them understand when you open that door into the world of music to help them latch on? So I would say making sure they're comfortable, make them laugh, introduce the song and say, all right, <clears throat> let's see who can sing. Let's see who can play an instrument. And you find what they like and what they're drawn to it. And you nurture that aspect of what they want to learn. I don't believe in having people do things that they don't want to learn. I, I don't. That's the only way of teaching. I like to let people try things and find their own way. Because sometimes you might learn something from them, no matter what their age. Um, is there any type of instrument that you prefer over one or the other yourself? Um, the reason I like guitar the most is because it's so versatile. Between the guitar and the piano... I feel like those are two instruments that are never really going to go away uh, as far as a professional aspect. I know people in college that, you know, got degrees in violin and trombone and trumpet thinking they were going to be the next you know, Joseph Alessi in a Philharmonic Orchestra. And, and that was an attainable goal in 2004. But now a lot of the symphonies are drying up. There's just not a lot of jobs. So the fact that you could take a guitar or a piano and go on TikTok or Facebook or YouTube, you're more likely to get an audience with that. Do you think that YouTube and, and online movie, uh, music streaming has changed the music world? And how has it, do you think? I think it's changed it in a way that you can be heard, whereas before the online, you, you wouldn't have. It would be word of mouth. Who's going to come to my show? Who's going to see me? Who might get my CD? And now that everyone's able to post stuff, there's a, another thing. It's called oversaturation. Whereas you might have been one guitarist in town at the time playing, now you're competing against 3,000. And in that oversaturation, should you worry and concern yourself that how do I stand out or get a following? Or should you just do what you do? And if people follow you, good. And if not, then that's fine too. I love this question. The, I've played a lot of shows, and if you're having fun, your audience is having fun too. And my favorite people to watch are guys like, um, I can't think of anyone in real particular right now, but someone I see on stage that you, you just, the, the longer you listen to them, the more you like them. And you see them having fun, and you have some you know banter back and forth, and it always makes you have fun. So as long as you feel it inside, what you're doing is right, and it's fun to you, everything else will come. What's the last song you listen to um, streaming or CD or on the radio that stands out in your mind? Hmm. That's a good question. There is a song. It's by Bob Dylan. It's called... Uh, I can't think of the name. Is of that an acoustic years or electric years? It, it, well, he does it in both, but he wrote it in his acoustic years. Um, Billy Strings does a cover of it. I can't think of the name of it right now. That's all right. But I can tell you later. So maybe I'll do on that.